These are three of the best Snapdragon 865 powered gaming phones of 2020. We have the Red Magic 5G, Black Shark 3 Pro, and Vivo IQ Neo 3. All of them come paired with eight gigs of RAM and that wonderful Snapdragon 865 processing chip. We'll have the latest updates over here. The IQ got the most recent updates. We have 144 Hertz on the two bottom phones and 90 Hertz on the Black Shark 3 Pro. The Black Shark 3 Pro also has ultra high 2K QHD+. We're gonna be using their respective game modes over here in order to boost game performance as well as the active fan seen on the red magic 5g and super performance mode on the red magic and ludicrous mode on the black shark 3 pro we're going to max out settings here on our first game which is call of duty mobile over here max fps and max graphics over here we finally have the option for extreme frames per second with call of duty mobile on snapdragon 865 processing chips in the most recent update before that we were capped to high of 40 frames per second. So it is nice to see that we can now do 60 frames per second. We are now sitting at around 60 frames per second on all three devices. Even though they have high refresh rate panels on all three phones, we are capped at 60 FPS here because Call of Duty is capped at 60 frames per second. There is no way to unlock this at the current moment, even using something such as GFX tools. The actual game is capped at 60 frames per second. Hopefully this will increase in the future because I am a sucker for playing on this map Rust in Call of Duty Modern Warfare on my PC at 144 frames per second. It is absolutely spectacular and I wish I could do it on the phone. So far, FPS stats on each device is sitting at a total average frames per second of 60 FPS. Neither of them had an issue running Call of Duty Mobile at 60 frames per second. Now we're gonna be doing HDR max graphics here and extreme FPS on PUBG Mobile. Player Unknown Battlegrounds, I'm sure most of you guys have heard and played this game once again, we have a 60 frames per second cap here, but the nice thing is that we're getting the HDR graphics setting matched with extreme frames per second. Before we had to use smooth graphics setting, which is the lowest presets in order to enable extreme on Snapdragon 865 powered phones. But once again, Tencent have now released the most up-to-date version of PUBG Mobile to now allow for extreme FPS on max graphics settings, which is really great to see here. So we get that 60 frames per second mode, which neither of them are having any issues with whatsoever. Still not testing out their max frame rates over here, 144 hertz on the two phones at the bottom and 90 hertz on the phone at the top over there they're capping out at 60 because the game is completely capped at 60 though we are using the max refresh the max resolution on all three devices being qhd plus on the black shock 3 pro it's doing a fantastic job of displaying qhd plus in PUBG Mobile at 60 frames per second with no lag whatsoever. That is really impressive. Guys, if you haven't noticed any issues around the borders of the screens here, I must say that this is actually a picture of the phones and then I have embedded the on display screen recorder of each phone into the phones to give you guys a more pleasing aesthetic than just to see square boxes of video footage on the screen as I have done before. It, it took a hell of a long time, so let me know if you guys enjoy it. Now this is indeed the Chinese version of PUBG Mobile. It is called Game for Peace. The reason why I've thrown this in is because it doesn't have a 60 frames per second cap. It has a 90 frames per second cap, but you have to use the graphics presets of Smooth. So you cannot use extreme and 90 frames per second here. If you, you cannot use HDR and 90 frames per second here. If you want to max out the graphics at HDR, then you're gonna be capped at 60, just like the global version. But if you go to smooth graphics preset settings, then you can indeed enable 90 FPS, which neither of them have issues running game for peace on. It looks absolutely stunning. It feels really smooth. This test is not so much about seeing the difference between them since I cannot really record at 144 frames per second but it looks really fantastic. 90 FPS on all of them for Game for Peace, and they all have the same total average so far of 70 frames per second. That's very expected with games that have a frames per second cap. Things get a little bit different here with Bullet Force. It has no frames per second cap whatsoever. So now we're gonna be seeing the true max refresh on all of them. The Black Shark 3 Pro is hitting around 89 most of the time in frames per second. The Red Magic 5G is hitting about 144, 145, 146, exceeding 
its frames per second cap with some lows of 132 over there. For some strange reason, the Vivo IQ Neo 3 is sitting at 60 frames per second. I must have spent three hours trying to figure out why. And the only reason for this that I could think of is that literally before I started doing this test, I have upgraded IQ's UI, Monster UI to version 1.7.8 before it was on 1.7.7 .7, and now it is capping that specific game at 60 which sucks dropping the total average fps to lower of that of the black shark 3 pro the highest being on the wonderful red magic 5g once again we have no frames per second cap on dead trigger 2 here a zombie first person player game over here the quad hd plus panel on the black shark is having no issues hitting 89 90 frames per second on the black shark 145 most of the time on the nubia red magic 5g absolutely insane i can definitely feel the difference here and yes we have no frames per second cap on dead trigger 2 even after the updates on the iq neo 3 over here though we're not quite hitting that 144 frames per second on the IQ as we are seeing with the Red Magic. It is a much cheaper phone though. We're sitting at about 125, 126 frames per second on that, which is 20 frames less than what it is actually capable of. And it has the same chipset and graphics processing chip as the Nubia Red Magic 5G. I guess it's kind of just how the game developers have worked with the phone company. I guess IQ have not worked so closely with global game companies such as the people that develop Dead Trigger 2 over here. So we have 145 FPS for Dead Trigger 2 on the Red Magic 5G, 89 on the Black Shark and 126 on the IQ Neo 3 over here, taking a skyrocket up when it comes to its total average frames per second exceeding that of the black shark but once again a no frames per second game over here into the dead the first one the second one is capped that's why i'm using the first one here and once again the iq neo 3 did work at 144 frames per second before this last update of the phone and now it is capping at 60 i'm not quite sure what iq are doing it's really disappointing to see this i was actually going to scrap this whole test because of it but i thought that i would just show you guys in case you were interested in buying the phone the red magic once again no issues hitting 144 145 frames per second bringing its total average up to 107 the black shark 3 total average to almost 80 and 76 on the iq neo 3 second last game of the bunch here which is real racing 3 once again no frames per second cap over here qhd plus 90 hertz no problem hitting 89 90 frames per second on the black shark 145 146 on the nubia red magic 5g it's absolutely insane my eyes were so big seeing this guys incredible once again the iq neo 3 has dipped down to 60 even though it was hitting 144 on this game or 126 about before its most recent update which has now lost support for quite a few games which really sucks i hope that this gets fixed in future software updates of the phone so so far we have taken a nosedive on the total average fps on the iq going down to 74 112.7 now on the newbie around 80 on the black shark which is really impressive and then the game with no frames per second cap and once again the update on the iq neo 3 has restricted the game to 60 frames per second before it was hitting around 130 if you guys haven't seen my unboxing that is where i am talking about where i saw those readings and when i did the unboxing it was perfectly fine now it is capped Red Magic and the Black Shark have no issues hitting their max refresh rates over here with complete max FPS. 145 FPS on Trials Frontier over here for the Nubia Red Magic 5G. 89 frames per second with Trials Frontier on the Black Shark 3 Pro and 60 once again on the IQ Neo 3. First place gets awarded to the Nubia Red Magic 5G with a total average frames per second of 116.8 FPS here. Remember, we do have a few frames per second capped games over here at 60 and 90. So so it would have been higher if those had no cap. The Black Shark 3 Pro in second place with 81.9 average frames per second and in last place 72 frames per second for the IQ Neo 3 with a total average over there. The only game that it could actually hit its true frame rate in was Dead Trigger 2. It really sucks that it has lost support for many of these games here. Anyway guys, Nubia is still continuing to shine through, making things compatible with pretty much every single game with its max refresh rate, which is really awesome to see. Check out the links in the description description down below in order to buy yours today. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. This is Technic and I'll see you in the next one.